Welcome to our third cradle sunflower planting ceremony. And once again this year, we're putting the service online because unfortunately we can't invite everybody to come to the garden, but we do hope that you enjoy the little ceremony that we've put together. This year, we've not invited people to send their babies' names to us, but what we are doing is inviting you to put your babies' names in the comment box below this on the YouTube channel, and that way they will be remembered. The song we've listened to in the garden is from Wicked for Good, which has many, many words of beauty within it. And I'm going to invite Louise now to come and share some of those words. I'm going to read some lyrics from the film Wicked, and the song is called For Good. I've heard it said that people come into our lives for a reason, bringing something we must learn. And we are led to those who help us most to grow if we let them and we help them in return. Well, I don't know if I believe that's true, but I know that I'm who I am today because I knew you. Like a comet pulled from orbit, as it passes the sun, like a stream that meets a boulder. Halfway through the wood, who can say if I've been changed for the better, but because I knew you, I have been changed for good. It well may be that we will never meet again in this lifetime. So let me say before we part, so much of me, is made of what I learned from you, and you'll be with me, like a handprint on my heart. And now, whatever way our stories end, I know you have rewritten mine by being my friend. Like a ship blown from its mooring by a wind off the sea, like a speed dropped by a sky bird in a distant wood, who can say if I've been changed for the better? But because I knew you, because I knew you, I have been changed for good. Hello, my name's Jan. I'm one of the hospital chaplains here at Ormskirk Hospital, and I'm here with Luan from Handmade with Love. Luan, can you tell us a bit more about Handmade with Love, your charity? We can. Um, Handmade with Love has been running since 2017. Um, predominantly, we started be for babies to produce tiny beds. Um, so we focused on beds from 12 weeks and under. Um, and we, I started up with um, a friend called Paul Scully Sloan. Um, and when Paul passed, we changed from Handmade with Love and Ma um, Angel Babies to Making Memories because we had a lot more people reach out to us who'd not lost a baby, but who'd experienced some form of loss. So um, we decided that Making Memories, um, we have 92 volunteers um, across the UK um, that are absolutely amazing. They range from 10 to 92 years old who's blind and still continues to knit for us. Um, and predominantly we care for, we believe in what's called Dress with Dignity, and that is to ensure every baby is offered a chance um, to be dressed with dignity, whether it's a crib this big or a crib this big. Mm -hmm. So we call them Forever Beds and everything is handmade by a parent or a grandparent. Lovely, lovely. <laughs> and you've brought today, you've brought some uh, sunflower boxes for us because we're planting sunflowers today. Um, can you tell us about the sunflower boxes that you've brought? Absolutely. Um, one of our ladies um, across there, Sam, um, during um, COVID, as we all know, people were restricted from grieving and where to turn to. Um, and a lot of people contacted Handmade with Love and Making Memories to asked if we have something memorial or something they could hold on to as a keepsake. So we thought about creating a box to show that love grows. So as baby loss parents, we know that as each year grows, you're, for many of us, your baby's memory will grow as in the age they are. So mm. it was trying to educate our community together, mm. which has helped us immensely in the respect that come Baby Loss Alliance Week, my street is pink and blue. Um, and we were able to reach out to a lot more people grieving. So the sunflower box, every item has been handmade by one of the team. Um, and something personal for each, even down to the wax melts being handmade. Mm. So, and I have Aww. one of the poems today that has been written from a dad. So Aww. we have the whole family involved in the box. So it's nice because it'll come through the post um, and it's lightweight. So we have seeds inside the box. Is it easier to show, do you think? Yeah, yeah, it'd be great yeah. to see one, yeah. Yeah. So each box has a keepsake, so it's a comforter. And then we have, sorry, Jen. <laughs> then we have like the journal and the pencil. 
And then the key ring for them to walk with love, plant the seeds and be able to have their own oh, planter. So one mm -hmm. of the things um, that we worked on was the fact of when people leave the hospital, they would be able to leave and do something and, and mm. to leave a mark or a memory themselves. So each box has a permanent marker in mm -hmm. so they can leave their own special note on the back. And some, many parents don't name their babies. So this is an ideal way for them to write a special date or a special quote. And inside would be the seeds. And kind of like what we looked at is a journal to write down what you're thinking, mm. the candle wax to, to actually relax to, the poem, so from a dad's perspective where he's at, I'm going to write your special message. So each box is donated in memory of a baby that we send out. Oh, not So this way. is from the parents oh. to the parents. Oh, that's lovely. And, how, and if somebody wants one of these boxes, how do they go about getting they one? They can just come straight to the community page um, on any of our social media sites or mm -hmm. email us mm -hmm. direct yeah. and we send them out free of charge. So we can put the email address up at Absolutely. the end of the video. That would be yeah. great, lovely. I believe you're going to read us the poem, are you? I am indeed. Yeah, that would be lovely. Thank you. Thank you. So I'm honoured today to read the poem by Angel Dad Scott McCluskey. Scott lost his little boy um, to in a topic pregnancy many years ago. So I'm very proud um, to read this out on his behalf. The Sunflower. Helene Fierce, or the sunflower to you and me, symbolizes adoration, longevity, and loyalty. This is how I remember my loved ones, you see. My loved ones in another realm above encourage this sunflower to reach for all their love. Our loved ones and sunflowers are all aligned as one, as they send their love that warms just like the sun, warm and radiant, cozy too as I feel it, the love from you. Oh, thank you, that's lovely. That's lovely. And now we come to the part where we're going to plant our sunflowers. Um, we're going to be listening to You Are My Sunshine while we do it. And Joyce, our lovely volunteer gardener, is going to help us. lovely that so many have planted sunflowers here, some of them before today, some during today, and we know many will plant sunflowers away from the garden here, in your own patios or gardens at home, and as they grow we know they'll be a lovely sign of hope. We're grateful for Dobbies in Southport who have donated some of the flowers and also to the co-op who have come today and donated some food for us while we do the service, and of course to Joyce, our volunteer gardener. I'm going to read a reflection now called The Parable of the sunflower seeds. A youngster is given some sunflower seeds. They are totally underwhelmed. Don't look at the seeds, they are told. Look at what they can become. In hopeful expectation, they plant the seeds, also similar to look at. In the child's mind, tomorrow the seeds will be twice as tall as they are with a smiling, flaming yellow flower. Every day for a week, they go out, longing for the first signs of growth. They faithfully talk to them, water them, encourage them. Soon, however, they get bored and forget all about them. Then one day, they happen to look, and there's the first sign of growth. Their hope is renewed, and once again, they find the watering can. They watch as the seeds grow. They all grow at different speeds, so different sizes, and some don't grow at all. 
In difficult drought conditions, the sunflowers huddle together to support one another, nature's way of supporting and comforting through difficult times. Ultimately, the ones that have germinated and grow stand as a sign of beauty and hope. In the sunflower, perhaps there's a parable for life and for grief. Every growth and every journey is different, but it has an integrity all of its own. In life and in grief, we learn that to get from where we are to where we want to be, it takes patience. We learn that we will not always fulfill our own expectations or the expectations of others, but that does not deny growth and beauty. You cannot say to the small sunflower, you're not as good as the giant one, they are just different. Nor can you say to a grieving person, your grief is not going right or fast enough or in the right direction, for every experience is unique. As we grieve, perhaps we need to learn from the sunflower seeds that from the plain, underwhelming, ugly, horrible and unasked for gift, growth, strength and beauty can come. Like the sunflower, against all the odds, may we keep growing into our own natural beauty. I'm now going to invite Lynn Barnes, our Director of Nursing, to come and read a poem. A beautiful garden. In the most beautiful of gardens, even those tended by the most skillful of botanists, there is an occasional rose that buds but never opens. In all respects, the rose is like all the others, but something keeps it from blooming. It fades away or disappears without having reached maturity. What happens in nature's garden happens once in a while also in the garden of God's human family. A new life is created, beautiful, precious, but fails to come to its rightful unfolding. These children, like the bud that never fully opens, are gathered back into God's heavenly garden. Where all imperfections are made perfect, all injustices are made right, all mysteries are explained and all sorrows turn to happiness. Jo Unsworth, our bereavement lead, is now going to come and read a poem. We plant these sunflowers in memory of you, bright, beautiful, bold reflections of the sun. Some may wonder why we choose such cheerful, happy flowers to remember something so painful and sad. We would like to think that these flowers are a reflection of the person that you would have become. Bright, beautiful, bold reflection of the sun. When we look at them and how they follow the sunshine, we are reminded of those of sunshine you brought during your brief stay. You were a bright, beautiful, bold reflection of the sun. Our sunshine is dulled on days like this as we remember you. However, we will take our inspiration from these bright, beautiful, bold reflections of the sun and seek out the sunshine, even if it is behind the clouds. I guess that initially grief can feel overwhelming, a huge weight that you carry around with you, rather like this heavy stone. You struggle with the weight of it as you go about your day-to-day -day living. I suppose over time you get used to lugging the weight around wherever you go. And on some days it might even feel a bit lighter. Slightly easier as you come to terms with your loss. You find ways to negotiate life carrying this heavy burden. And it starts to weigh a little less. But in some ways the grief, the weight of this burden is almost a comfort, confirming the love you have for that person whose loss you feel. So you really don't want to put that weight down, as if putting this weight down seems a betrayal. Maybe over time, the grief weighs less and is more manageable.
the weight of grief never goes away, but maybe it becomes a more manageable companion in your life. Maybe, maybe the grief shrinks to something that you can hold in the palm of your hand and take with you wherever you go as a reminder of that love. I'm going to read a poem by someone who's experienced loss, the loss of a loved one herself, and someone who's walked alongside those who are grieving. It's called The Heavy Stone by Avril Steadford. My grief was a heavy stone, rough and sharp. Grasping to pick it up, my hands were cut. Afraid to let it go, I carried it. While I had my grief, you were not lost. The rain of my tears smoothed it. The wind of my rage weathered it, making it round and small. The cuts in my hand have healed. Now in my palm it rests, sometimes beautiful, sometimes almost you. We're coming to the end of our sunflower ceremony for this year. Thank you for watching and as I said a little bit earlier, I hope also you've been able to plant seeds or plants within your own areas and see the hope as they grow. I'd like to thank everybody who's taken part in our ceremony today. I'd like to thank Matt from Lara Media for coming and filming as well. The song we're going to listen to in the garden at the end of our ceremony is called Winter Bear and some of the lyrics from that are, I knew you before I knew your name. I loved you before I saw your face. I longed for you all of that time, and I held you in your heart in mine. As we go from this ceremony, we carry the loved ones that we know so well, very much in our hearts and minds. Thank you again for taking part in this ceremony. final words I'd want to say are the ones we have around our baby memorial. Those we love don't go away. They walk beside us every day, unseen, unheard, always near, still loved, still cherished, and always dear.